powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Jay Cohn. Russ is on assignment tonight. Emotions running high during tonight's Billing City County Zoning Commission meeting. In a unanimous vote, the commission agrees to move forward with a special review for a gravel pit proposed near the Yellowstone River southwest of the city. Standing room only at the Royal Johnson Community Room at the Billings Public Library this evening. Now, the Zoning Commission was acting on the recommendation of planning staff to review construction of a proposed 116-acre project on Wise Lane and Story Road that's near Oscars Park. After reviewing the proposal, the commission opened the meeting to public comment, which lasted about an hour. Among the concerns raised tonight, public safety, traffic congestion, and the new proposed gravel pit's proximity to local schools. Local business owners, even the superintendent of the Canyon Creek School, voiced concerns. The property owners in this area have legitimate concerns regarding several issues, some of them involving noise pollution, increased traffic, water rights, adequate water table management, and most importantly, reduction in property value. We asked for research to be done on if our well water is going to be affected. We have over 140,000 gallons of water in our system. It is what the plants grow in. It is the livelihood. And I have yet been shown that it won't have any impact. I was told it probably shouldn't. Well, we have over a million dollars invested in this business and probably shouldn't isn't good enough for me. The commission voted to advance the review to Yellowstone County Commissioners who have the final say on the project. The commission meeting at which time the project will be considered is scheduled for later this month. Tariffs and taxes take center stage in New Orleans today as the president makes his case to one of the nation's most influential agricultural organizations. The Montana Ag Network's Lane Nordland is in New Orleans to bring us the story. From the partial government shutdown, the border wall and the looming Mueller investigation, all those topics on America's mind this week. But in New Orleans, Louisiana, President Donald Trump was met with open arms by the nation's farmers and ranchers as he spoke at the 100th American Farm Bureau Convention. A friend of the American farmer, the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. President Trump began his speech showing his appreciation for American agriculture. I like the farmers. What can I do? I like farmers. Thank you. Thank you. On trade, Trump gave few details with the ongoing negotiations with China, adding that it will be beneficial for U.S. agriculture if it's complete. Though the new U.S., Mexico, and Canada trade agreement that will replace NAFTA has not been passed by Congress, Trump says the agreement benefits agriculture. This landmark trade deal will increase exports of wheat from Montana, dairy from Wisconsin, chicken from Georgia, and products from farmers and ranchers all across our country. Montana Farm Bureau members say they remain cautiously optimistic on trade. I don't think we know enough about it, but I think that um, they're really excited about the opportunities that are coming for us. I believe the man's on the right track. I mean, we didn't get here overnight. Things have been a roller coaster for the last few years, and that's on. He has opened up a lot of trade with different countries. Uh, we seem to hear about the, the bad ones, maybe more so than the good ones he's done. Uh, we've, we'll get there. I, I think we're on a track. We've done more for agriculture the short time he's been in there than uh, the past presidents have. The president praised the bipartisan 2018 farm bill he recently signed. The administration's work on regulatory reform, including repealing and replacing the waters of the U.S. rule, while also saying that the defense of the nation is his highest priority in discussing border security. When it comes to keeping the American people safe, I will never, ever back down. In fact, the president spent the first 30 minutes of his speech discussing the border barrier, as he calls it. But at the end of the day, the nation's farmers and ranchers here in New Orleans were quite pleased that he attended this year's event. They say that shows his commitment to rural America and the prosperity of the nation's farmers and ranchers. From New Orleans, Lane Nordland, MTN News. The Farm Bureau Convention wraps up on Wednesday. In Great Falls today, developers of the Keystone XL pipeline were in U.S. District Court asking that pre-construction work on that project be allowed to resume. It was back in December that U.S. District Judge Brian Morris ordered all physical construction on the project to stop until a full environmental review could be completed. But today, attorneys for TransCanada asked Judge Morris to allow work to move forward while they appeal his original ruling. 
TransCanada telling the court that the construction of work camps and pipe yards fall outside of the court's jurisdiction because they're located on private land with private leases with permits issued by local governments. Meanwhile, attorneys for the Northern Plains Resource Council and other groups suing to block the pipeline project contend if construction of the camps continues, it could influence the federal permitting process and limit alternatives. Judge Morris took those arguments today under advisement. TransCanada says if it's unable to resume <coughs> pre-construction work by mid-March, it stands to lose out on the entire 2019 construction season. It hasn't taken former Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke long to find a new job. Zinke resigned his cabinet seat in late December amid accusations that he violated ethics rules, accusations he denies. Now, Zinke will now become the managing director for Artillery One, an investment firm that focuses on industries like energy and financial technology. Artillery One CEO Daniel Cannon cites Zinke's experience and understanding of the workings and business of government as key to helping the firm expand its consulting and finance business in the core areas of cybersecurity, energy, and digital currency. According to thinkprogress.org, Artillery One has virtually no online presence. A Facebook and Twitter account do exist, but its website appears to no longer work. Artillery One describes its mission as advising funding the next generation of disruptive technologies and connecting capital to the unique opportunities and special situations. Artillery One says the former Montana congressman will be based in Montana and California, his wife Lola's, Lola's home state, but also he will travel extensively. Iowa Republican Congressman Steve King will not have any committee assignments during the congressional term underway in Washington, the House Republican Steering Committee made that unanimous decision tonight. The Iowan will not hold his previous seat on the prestigious Judiciary Committee or the Ag Committee, a key one for his state. The congressman's been in the spotlight since the New York Times quoted him saying that he doesn't understand why terms like white nationalist and white supremacist are offensive. According to the Washington Post, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said, quote, if he doesn't understand why white supremacy is offensive, then he should find another line of work, end quote. Congressman King says his comments have been completely mischaracterized and that he rejects white supremacy. 2018 was a record year for Billings Logan International Airport. Last year, the airport had nearly 905,000 passengers come through the facility. That's an increase of more than 50,000 passengers over 2017. Kevin Plone, Director of Aviation and Transit, credits the 6% increase to a strong local economy, a strong year for the agricultural sector, and marketing through Visit Billings. The last time the airport set a passenger record was back in 2012 at just under 900,000. 2018 was also a record setter for the Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. While Billings set a new passenger record of 905,000, the Bozeman Airport recorded more than 1.3 million passenger visits. That's close to a 12% increase over 2017. Montana claimed a big victory today at the U.S. Supreme Court in a long-running case on campaign contributions. Essentially, the high court let Montana's limits stand. MTN's Mike Dennison explains. Almost eight years ago, several businesses and Republican Party groups sued the state, alleging Montana's legal limits on how much money you can give to a state office candidate are an unconstitutional restriction on free speech. A federal judge in Helena initially struck down the limits, but the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals overturned that ruling in 2017. On Monday, the U.S. Supreme Court, without comment, declined to accept an appeal of that decision, which means Montana's contribution limits will stand. One of the state attorneys who worked on the case says it was a big relief and a victory for Montana citizens who don't want big money donors to dominate certain races. Montanans have a long history of believing in that and fighting for it. And I mean, this is, this is a citizen initiative that was put back in in 1994. Opponents of the limits argue that they're so low, they encourage political players to attempt to spend more money in other ways that's harder to track. Under Montana's current limits, a single PAC or individual can give a gubernatorial candidate no more than $1,360. The donation limits are lower for other statewide candidates and the legislature. McNaughton says the relatively low limits make Montana's political system unique, essentially requiring candidates to get a broader field of donors when running for office. Instead of having higher contribution limits, which allow you to get money from fewer individuals, Montanans have said, 
we want you to go out, shake our hands, come talk to us, and raise your money directly from us, and hear from us what our issues are. So that when you show up at the legislature, you know what we're about. Governor Steve Bullock's office also said that Montanans want transparency and limits instead of big money in campaigns, and that Monday's decision means some of those protections are here to stay. This case is finally over, but Montana's campaign finance regulations are not out of the legal woods yet. The U.S. Supreme Court is also deciding whether to accept a separate case challenging our 2015 campaign disclosure law. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Thank you, Mike. Mike tells us that disclosure law attempts to require so-called dark money groups to report their donors and their spending in Montana races. Turning to weather, Connor Pregatzer is in for Bob tonight, and we really haven't seen the heavy hitters of winter yet, but that's because they hit east of us. Yes, a lot of Americans this weekend were facing the heavy right. hitters of winter. A big storm cr crossing much of the Midwest into the mid-Atlantic, dropping some serious snow while we were enjoying a pleasant weekend with blue skies and sunshine. A lot of these places were seeing some record-setting snowfall. Columbia, Missouri topping the list there, 20 inches plus. Also in Missouri, St. Louis Airport seeing 10 inches, a lot of travel delays there. As we go down the list, the National Zoo in D.C. over 10 inches, Annapolis almost 10 inches there as well. For us here, we look at the precipitation very dry. For the month, only one hundredth of an inch of precipitation falling here. But that is set to change as Montana looks to remind us that it's still January. I'm going to break down that whole wintry forecast coming up in just a little bit. All right. Thanks so much, Connor. Still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, the man who abducted a 13-year-old girl and murdered her parents makes his first appearance in court. Plus, this man didn't have much, but he gave all he could to help a Kansas City Chiefs player make it to a history-making game. And in sports, Scott shows us if the Bobcat men tonight claim the outright lead in the Big Sky Conference. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.